So welcome Gabby Coatesworth. Gabby is the author of a memoir called Love's Journey Home and also a novel with a wonderful title, A Beginner's Guide to Starting Over. And although Gabby has an literary agent, she made the decision to self-publish. So Gabby, can we, we just get right into it? What made you choose self-publishing? Well, with two completely different books, there were two completely different situations. With the memoir, I knew pretty well that I was not going to get a contract with a traditional publisher because I I'm not a celebrity and I have not been abducted by aliens. So I didn't have the sort of story that would be sensational. And when I mentioned it to my agent, she agreed with me. So... Um, I immediately began to look for other options, which included small traditional publishers that didn't, didn't require an agent, um, hybrid publishers where you pay someone to do all the work you would do yourself if you were going to self-publish. And I looked at the self-publishing option. And with the novel, it was a different situation. So I submitted um, my novel manuscript to the agent and she was, delighted with it. She's like, this is the best thing since sliced bread. And she started to submit it to the big traditional publishers and their various imprints, of which there are many now. And the response she got was um, from one publisher. The book was called, what was it called? Among its many titles, um, The Bookshop of Second Chances, because the uh, protagonist worked in a bookstore and, and so on and so forth. So one publisher said, oh, we're publishing something with that exact title in about six months' time. Yeah. And another publisher said, well, I like this, but I'd like a stronger main character and um, and more of the bookshop. So my agent said, off you go. You know, you need to rewrite this. So with the help of a, um, a manuscript evaluation, which I paid for, I did rewrite it, made her the owner of the bookstore, gave her a wicked landlord and added more of the bookstore um, to it. And by that time, that editor at that publisher had moved to another imprint of theirs, which dealt only in cozy mysteries. Yeah. And when my agent said to me, do you think you could rewrite this as a cozy mystery? I sort of went, mm, no, I don't think so. So she kept submitting to smaller traditional publishers, which did look for things from agents. And one of them said, well, love this, but I can't publish it until at least, you know, the end of 2025 because my schedule is full. That's one of the snags with a small publisher and a big one, too. Actually, traditional publishers are like that as well. Um, and the... I can't remember what happened with the other publisher, but in it, in any case, she said to me, why don't you try a few small publishers on your own? And so that's what I began to do. And some of them answered me. Some of them were like, no, this is too too much like what we have. you know. And I, I knew I'd got a decent book because I'd put a lot of work into it. I'd paid editors. I'd done every possible thing. I'd had it read by beta readers and um and so on and people who read it liked it a lot so i thought okay and i was yeah, it reads just like a traditionally published book yeah yeah so i i was getting a little frustrated and i was getting a little older so i thought if i have to wait till 2025 for the first book to come out it's going to take me forever right. so in the end i decided to look around at the other publishers and uh, and I considered self-publishing, but I knew it would be a huge learning curve. And although I could have done it, that was going to delay me more, I thought. And it takes away from your writing time learning these things. So I decided to go with a, a hybrid press because during COVID I had not been on any vacations. So I told myself I'd saved all that money and I would use it to pay this publisher to publish my book. And they did a tremendous job. Um, I think I had eight different versions of the cover, for instance, until it was exactly what I wanted. One of the great things about that method is that you have a lot of say. Right. You can approve everything. You can make suggestions. And 
if you know what you want, which I did. So, and they'd already done my memoir, so I knew they were going to yeah, so, so produce this, a, good, a good book. This is Atmosphere Press. And can we just mm -hmm. go back just a little bit? And I want to ask you some statistics. So when you were submitting your novel to get a literary agent, how many literary agents did you pitch with your query letter? I pitched about 30, I think. And but and and but the way I got my agent was through a recommendation from a fellow author who had read my novel and loved it and told her agent about me. Mm -hmm. And I think I've heard that sometimes fairly often that in the end, yes, you can send out your hundred uh, query letters and so on. But in the end, it's often some kind of a connection, like an agent you might meet at an event or um, and you can pitch face to face mm -hmm. or somebody's cousin at, at a barbecue says, oh, I know somebody in, you know, publishing or whatever it is. Maybe they like that. Well, I've the, heard the, mm -hmm. the pitch events, I think, are definitely a good way to get that face time. So with the um, statistically speaking, when she submitted the novel to the traditional publishers, do you have a rough idea of how many submissions she made? And then how many did you make when you went out on your own? She submitted to about 15. So she started with the big five main imprints and then she moved down the tiers to the various things. And, and this took a while because in the middle of it, I was rewriting the book. So, um, and then when I started to submit to small independent publishers, I had done a lot of research. So I'd got, every time I heard of a uh, small publisher, I would check them out. I ordered books from each of the publishers that I thought were interesting to see what kind of quality of book they were. Um, and the kind of writing that they published, I wanted to be published by somebody who published good books, not just anybody's book. Um, and so with the small indie presses, the independent presses, um, I submitted to about eight of them because they were the ones that seemed to me to have the best reviews from their writers, um, didn't seem to have any financial problems. You know, there are ways to check these things out. And I submitted to them and I had two who answered and said, uh, yes, it's lovely, but it's not for us at this time, which is, you know, a fairly standard thing. And I had dead silence from a number of others, which, by the way, was also true of the agents. Um, I suspect that with email being what it is, if you're query or whatever it is goes off their pages to page two like if it's your 50 if it's 51st on their list they tend to forget about it so um and they get hundreds of, of submissions a day many of them so it is it's a lottery really and um but you know it's it's definitely worth doing if you get any kind of response at all, often it will have helpful remarks that will tell you what they like. Sometimes they'll ask you to submit something else um, or to keep them in mind for your next book. Um, so it's not it's not a waste of time and it's actually a good way to learn something about the business too, because a lot of writers have the feeling that when you've written your manuscript, you take it into the editor like Hemingway did and slap it on his desk and the editor goes, this is fabulous and here's the book. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your and so it, uh, work like that. When we get to yeah. that, that's the time to start getting business minded. But when we were talking before I hit the record button, you told me that you're working on two novels now, which is <laughs> that's twice as hard as doing one. But when you go, so presumably you're going to finish one and then go back to your agent. And will you go, will you aim to go traditionally? Will you take the same sort of approach? I'm going to take her advice on that. So if she likes it and she can see that this one has done reasonably well, it's not not got huge sales, but I discovered that 
of all the books published by traditional publishers, 96% sell fewer than 2,000 copies. Yes. And they that, make all that, their money. The test case was very useful, wasn't it, with all those statistics? It really was. Yeah. 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 So anyway, so yes, no, I will ask her. The reason I have two novels is because I had started one which takes place in the same little town, and uh, this one is in a library, not a bookshop. And the other one I started when I was waiting for things to happen because I have a character in this book who's a 90-year-old lady who wears mini skirts and pippy long stocking tights and has bright red hair and who likes racy romance novels. And people love that character. So I thought, okay, I'll write a short story about that character. But it got longer and longer and longer. So it will probably end up being a novella, I think. Lovely. So I thought you reminded me, your voice reminded me very much of Elizabeth Buchan, the English writer, whose books I love. Um, and I'll be very interested to see if they have the same humor. I'm sure they will have the same humor and the same warmth. I'll be curious to, you know, maybe we can have you back and you can give us an update in a in a while. But um, so that's the submission process and you went with Atmosphere Press. And then can you talk about the marketing process? What did you have to do? How much time did it take you in the beginning? How much time does it take you now? So I watched other people's marketing efforts. One of the things that a lot of writers don't realize is that even the big publishers don't do a lot of marketing. They don't do the book tours for you anymore and, and so on and so forth. Um, and if you're publishing independently, you have an additional issue, which is that although your book can be ordered from any bookstore, it is unlikely to be on the shelves of the bookstore unless you go sort of door to door trying to persuade individual bookstores. So it's one of the things I need knew I needed to do was to get the word out. And I looked to see what other people were doing. Um, there were several things. I did a book launch with the lovely Birds Books in Bethel, and we did it as a live event, but also on Zoom so that people who couldn't get to Connecticut, uh, people from all over the country, in fact, and somebody in Canada, were able to order signed books from the bookstore and see the launch. And I then sat and signed all the books that that they bought that way and the bookstore mailed them out. So that was a, a new kind of marketing. I've suggested it to other writers too, if they're going to do something in a bookstore. So, so that was the, the book launch. To get in touch with them, did you just email them or did you go in and see someone? I went in and saw someone. Um, I saw the owner, Alice Hutchinson, and to begin with, he didn't really want to talk to me. And then as I talked to her, she realized that actually I did sort of know roughly what I was doing because I have a background in marketing and and we liked each other, which is a, a huge part of it, you know. So the way she decided to do it was she bought books from me and paid me for them as they got sold. So essentially they were on consignment. But that was good for both of us because um, it meant that I was in that bookstore. So a uh, bookstore launch is one thing. Personal events are another that um, I think can be very good, can be disappointing. So I've done some where I've sold, uh, you know, 40 books or something, and I've had others where I've sold two. <laughs> but one of the things that I enjoy about all of those things is that you're generally meeting other authors because book fairs have several people and you're expanding your network, getting ideas for how to promote your books. Um, in addition to that, I've done, uh, I got reviews for my book before it was published. So I sent it out to writer friends of mine and I asked them, would they write me a blurb? And some of them I was really shy about asking them because I thought, no, they're too well known. You know, they don't have to do this. But they were very kind and they did. And I used those to make posts for Facebook, for example, and Instagram. I don't worry about using Facebook because my 
the heroine of my book is coming up to 50 years old. So she's not a TikTok person, uh, you know, people who like that sort of age group. Um, so I used quotes from other people to, to tell people how lovely my book was. Um, and I also did what they call a, um, a book tour, but it's a blog book tour. So essentially there are small companies, one of them is in Westport, Connecticut, who will who have a whole lot of book reviewers. And um, the book reviewers uh, will give you a review, will take a photo of your book very often in, in lovely surroundings. You know, it's not just a picture of the cover, it's with a cup of tea and so on. And they will post those to uh, social media, also to Amazon and Goodreads. And having reviews on Amazon and Goodreads is very crucial for getting your book noticed. Sure. And what's her name again? I know I've met her, but I forget for the moment. Uh, Sus her, the company is called Susie Approved. Susie Approved. That's it. S-U-Z-Y Approved. Y Approved. Yeah, and her name is Susie Leopold, but it's harder to find her under that, easier under Susie uh, approved. And so she, I think I had sort of 18 reviewers and I packed up the books and I put a little tea bag in. So they had a tea bag. Oh, you know, so I, like... loved it. I loved it. I got one, got one from you. Yeah. So just to review, um, no TikTok, but you did go on Instagram. You did go on Facebook, I'm assuming. Yes. And uh, with events that I'm doing, I put those on LinkedIn and have a surprising number of people who uh, look at and comment. I did revamp my website so that it looked like a proper author website. And in fact, I, I'm just going to say, I think I won. Yeah, I did. I won a, the Connecticut Press Club Award for a website and for a social media campaign for, um, for a book. Yeah. But, you know, it's 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 work. It is work. That brings us to the time that it took. You got the skills you were able to execute. Was it a full-time job in the beginning? How many hours a day? You try and do as I did anyway, tried to do as much as I could before the book actually came out. Because while the publisher is working on it, um, you've got time to plan what it is you want to do. So I got a, a software called Trello, which is like a calendar where you can put all your tasks in. And I, I got myself organized that way. Um, and I had lists of things I needed to do, try to find podcasts who would like to uh, interview me, um, see whether I can join events with other writers, um, start an email list. Um, very important because... As somebody pointed out to me, if the social media suddenly goes down, your email list is all you've got. Yes. Let me ask you, did you ever, in doing this, were you ever beset by self-doubt? Were there times when, yes, tell us about that and how did you overcome that? That's, I think it's a, an occupational hazard of being a writer. It starts when you're writing, you know, and you get to that point where you're like, this is a stupid idea. Nobody's ever going to buy a book like this. And you just have to take a little break and come back to it. Usually will help or take a little break and do something different. Like you suggest, I think, don't you? Um, trying a little flash fiction. Haven't you got something coming up to show people how to get over that hump? Yes, and low get state. back into writing. Yes, a low stakes way to do it. Yeah, and so, exactly. so, so something similar with marketing, mm -hmm. um, and, or I would stop doing that and work a little bit on the next book to try and show myself that I've got a future. You know, um, so yes, doubt, doubting myself was one thing, but but as you start to get feedback from readers for example and i think that's very crucial when 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 readers either in writing sometimes they would email me sometimes they would put it in a review and sometimes i would meet them at events like book fairs and so on and i love that because there's nothing better than meeting someone actually someone you don't know and saying you know Magic. This is the book I wrote. Um, and they say, oh, yes, I like that other one. Yeah, I liked your memoir. So it's like, yes. And um, 
I, sometimes you you get a response that's a little odd. So I have my memoir concerns my life with my husband, and um, and part of it was that I live in uh, that we were living in Connecticut, but we, but we traveled a lot to New Hampshire because my husband preferred it up there. And so anyway, I walked into the dentist's office and a hygienist I'd never met before came up and she said, are you Gabby Coatsworth? And I was like, well, you know, fame at last. So I said, yes. And she said, um, because I just loved your book. And I said, oh, she said, it was just my story. And what I really admired, and I was getting ready to green myself a bit more, she said, was all that driving you did up and down to New Hampshire? <laughs> you've got to be prepared for people to keep your feet on the floor. <laughs> and um, a wonderful but, driver. Yes. <laughs> but the takeaway, the takeaway was that she loved the book and she could relate to it. So, um, and, and, you know, people relate to different parts of the book. Uh, any book that you write, I think it's, it, that is fascinating to me. Some people see things in it that you had no idea sure. you'd, you'd put in there. How many hours a day now do you devote to marketing or how many days a week? How is it working? I would say that I do about an hour a day on, on marketing. And part of that is keeping up on social media. Part of that is um, people now contact me to say, can I do X and, and Y? Or would I like to do this kind of a promotion? Some of it is not good stuff to do but um i'm dealing with those sort of inquiries too mm -hmm. and that can sometimes take a little longer i try to do about two hours of writing a day mm -hmm. um but since i'm editing and going back and forth i'm taking out you know a thousand words and adding 1200 and thinking yeah okay so i've done 200 words today but it's you getting better it got to let go of the word count when you're in that space yeah so we're yeah. almost out of time but I know you have a couple of events would you like to share the monthly events that you do I've been to your reading which is which I loved you're a wonderful MC. so tell people about that so there's an open mic which I do on the third Tuesday of the month it's held at the Westport Library but also on Zoom simultaneously so that if you can't make it there uh, we have we have people from Canada who come and and last time somebody from Egypt. Mm. So it, that makes it a wonderful experience, something different every time. And then on the third Wednesday, we have a, a meeting group for writers where we talk about writing. We don't write. We don't read. But um, we share ideas and answers for people. You know, how do I find someone to make a cover for me? Um, what can you tell me about uh, going to this conference or whatever it might be? So that's a meeting that I like. And I do a write-in every Monday morning that writers can join on Zoom for the Pequot Library, which is our local small library here. That's and cool. that's yeah. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes I, I do other things like interviewing other writers and stuff, which is fun. Okay, um, so if someone wants to get in touch with you, is it gabbycoatsworth.com? It is, and and if they want, it's gabby at gabbycoatsworth.com. Okay, so that's, folks, that's the email. Yes, so you can, anyone can see how to spell Gabby's name in her little label there. So gabbycoatsworth at gmail.com or her website is gabbycoatsworth.com. So thank you very much, Gabby. We would love to have you back and get the update um, as things proceed. And thank you so much for your time today. It's been my pleasure, Tessa. It's lovely to talk to you. <laughs> Thanks. Bye.